I am about to commit the equivalent of a video game war crime and show you our footage of Transistor without sound. Transistor is Supergiant Games' new title uh, that was shown off at PAX East 2013. We had the opportunity to play the press demo and to talk to a couple of the developers. And while we weren't able to get sound, I thought it would be disingenuous not to show off what we got. So instead, I'm going to commentate it, talk a little bit about why I think this is going to be such an excellent game, and how it is changed, and how it is different from what Supergiant Games did with Bastion. So you're seeing the opening now, and this introduces us to the main character of Transistor, Red. She's a singer in her world, this kind of noir, 20s-styled science fiction world that's very interesting, very unique. Uh, and as you can see, she's been targeted by a group of assassins. We don't really know why, and it's not really revealed, but suffice to say she manages to escape an assassination attempt. By the miracle, if you will, the strange happenings of this weapon, which she's walking to right now that somehow is embedded in the chest of this other person. This weapon is called the Transistor, and it's kind of a, a great sword that looks like it's made out of a motherboard. It's interesting because it's a very cool mechanic. The Transistor blade, if you will, essentially serves as the narrator of the game, and this narrative mechanic of somebody, you know, telling you what's going on, talking about things while you're playing, returns from Bastion. The, the Transistor is essentially the old man of Bastion. However, it doesn't look at least like we're going to have the same kind of weapon uh, swapping that we did in Bastion, which is a little sad, but I'm willing to take it. Um, one thing to focus here, it's a little hard to see, but when Red first came into this world, and she's kind of fleeing her assassination attempt. She's in this very elegant ball, ballroom gown. And now, she's got a kind of punkish, you know, motorcycle jacket. This is obviously a character development tool, and it's very cool to see that this sword is essentially giving her this sense of confidence, this sense of an ability to fight. It also gives her something else, which you're seeing right now. And that's the ability to stop time and to execute a plan as she wishes. You essentially have a number of action points and you're able to divvy them up between your different attacks. Right now we've only got two in this demo. Uh, at this point, just a basic attack and kind of a, a ranged line attack. Uh, once you freeze time, you're able to move around, you know, decide which enemies you're going to attack, which you're not, how you're going to attack them, and then execute it and you're going through and fast forward and you f do whatever you said you wanted to do. It's a very cool mechanic, it allows you to plan things out, but at the same time, you've also got to be careful because, as you'll see later on, there are some enemies that move around. The enemies in this game are very cool. They're all uh, robots, they've got a couple different abilities, but nevertheless, they are surely going to provide us with enough variety to keep things interesting. I'm not sure I like them quite as much as the scumbags of Bastion that kind of became an icon, but I also haven't seen very much of it, so I'll reserve judgment. As we're moving forward, we can see something kind of interesting. The transistor blade was actually found inside of a civilian, a, a guy, uh, when Red picked it up. And we don't know how it got there. But after Red defeats these three uh, protocol uh, processes, sorry, uh, we'll see that there's actually a dead body on the ground, and the transistor is able to actually talk to these dead bodies, which is a little creepy in some ways. We now have a mechanical sword uh, with the power to stop time and absorb souls, but it's also a really cool narrative device. We learn bits of information as we encounter, you know, the other uh, targets of assassination, and they also serve as our means of gaining abilities. Transistor, so far, in this short demo, we've got uh, about 12 minutes of gameplay. Uh, it handles very well. It's got the same kind of feel as Bastion, though there's not that same emphasis on swapping weapons and getting a good combination of that going. 
Uh, I think that that's okay because it's replaced by this kind of, I guess you, we can call it a time stop mechanic. And the thing that makes this mechanic especially work is that it recharges really quickly. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see different perks or, you know, different choices that change the way it works, but you get to use it a lot. And so it becomes a very core mechanic of the way that the, uh, that the game works. Uh, really good shot right here of Red in her new outfit and kind of versus her old one. Uh, there's a poster of her from Iompeo. I don't know what that means. Uh, it's a very interesting characterization. I think this is probably a good point to insert, you know, the interview that I had with uh, Greg Kazavin, the creative director, um, where I talked a little bit about narrative. Questions I have are about um, the direction you're taking uh, with Transistor. Why? I mean, Bastion had a very Western vibe. What was it that, you know, kind of made you go almost the complete opposite, a noir, sci-fi kind of yeah, um, deal? I, I think I think we'll get the... I'm just sorry, I'm upstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the costume is good. Um, we, you know, one of the things that was really exciting for us to do on Bastion was to just, like, make a world from scratch. Just, like, come up with this weird, like, fantasy frontier world. Um, that by the end of it, it you know, we, we got really attached to it ourselves, and, and then we were just incredibly grateful and happy that we got a good response. So, um, when it came time to think about, like, when we are thinking about making a new game, you know, one of the thoughts was like, hey, what if we were to try doing that again? Because um, we never formed Supergiant on the premise that, like, oh, we're just, you know, oh, that's in the game. The only game that we will ever, you know, it wasn't like our one idea. That started with a really simple idea and then it evolved into what it, what it became. So, yeah, um, the, you know, for a variety of reasons then, we, we wanted to then see, like, what we could do in the science fiction genre having worked in the fantasy genre. That wasn't, like, an arbitrary choice. It was just, like, there were things, you know, thematically and the narrative and gameplay-wise uh, that we wanted to try that didn't necessarily make sense in Bastion's world. Um, so that's kind of where some of the thinking originated. Um, and then, you know, then when it's like, okay, what's exciting to us about science fiction? Like, what do we want to do with it? We we don't want to do something that feels like stuff we've seen a lot before because because we love that stuff. It's already good. It's like the, the examples I give is it's like we don't want to we don't want to make like a straight up cyberpunk game because there's already something like Deus Ex Human Revolution that's like an awesome example of that. Or sure. The upcoming uh, CD Projekt cyberpunk game. So we we want to try to find our own identity and finding. Um, you know, creating an, a, a distinct identity and atmosphere and mood for this game is very important to us as it was in Bastion. So yeah, um, like I said, in short, we wanted to see if we could do it again, and this is what we have so far. Sure. And thankfully, the response uh, seems to be really good here at the show. Yeah. It means we, could, uh, we get to keep going uh, forward with it. Um, the other question I wanted to ask is yeah. the choice of making it a heroine as yeah. opposed to a hero. Yeah. And maybe you can mention something about that. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's very that's very connected uh, to what I was saying before. Um, it's It wasn't... You know, the, the thing I say about that is, like, our characters, you know, the player character's foremost purpose is, you know, to represent the player in the game, blah, blah, blah. But um, secondarily to that, it's like, the, the, the player character for us, it's really a reflection of the world that the character comes from. It's your best sort of immediate insight into the kind of world that this, that this is. So in Bastion, you know, we wanted to make this, like, almost sort of pathetic, like, empathetic character. He's, he's this scrappy kid. He's got this hard-living lifestyle. His hair is already white, you know. He's, he's drinking spirits <laughs> in the distillery. He's breaking stuff with a hammer. He's falling on his face all the time. So, like, the we wanted you to feel like, oh, God, don't die. I just want to help you not die horribly in this game. Um, uh, of course, it's like, in a, you know, with a cartoony vibe. But, uh, you know, in Transistor, on the other hand, it's meant to be this more romanticized world. Um, it's, it's this kind of grand, romanticized city, and so you get this kind of elegant woman um, who's, who's the protagonist character in this case. She indicates, you know, the kind of world that this is. Uh, of course, uh, some very bad things occur to her uh, in, in the backstory that, that result in, in the story of this game. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's... 
it, it, it's just uh, the character that made sense for the kind of story we want to tell here. I, Red is an interesting character. Because while she's, cl she's clearly sympathetic, more sympathetic maybe than the kid of Bastion, or perhaps in a different way. The kid of Bastion was, in my case, and granted I am a scrappy young man, um, uh, he was easy to empathize with and to put ourselves onto, in my opinion. He was silent, much as Red is, but in a different way. He never said anything, and it was clearly because he was a badass. He was a scrappy young kid going about his life, and his life was shit. So he didn't say much, and you understood that. However, Red is very interesting, because she's silent as well. However, we know that that's not the case normally. She's a singer. She, her voice is her livelihood. It is her soul. It is her form of artistic expression. So her not having a voice says a lot more than the kid not having a voice. It doesn't necessarily make Red easier to place ourselves on. She, she is definitely more of her own character than the kid was in Bastion, but it makes her far more sympathetic. It is much easier to understand why we should care about Red, what kind of pain she's going through. Um, we're also seeing a fight here with a jerk who's kind of like the end boss of the demo. Uh, big guy kind of just mo mows his way through. We're also going to see a death here in a second. Um, obviously, since this is a press demo, easy to revive. Um, as I was saying, Red, she's sympathetic. It's easy to understand where she's coming from, uh, why she wants to keep investigating things, where she wants to, you know, go out, find these assassins, and recover her voice, and, you know, more than recover her voice, become who she was again. Um, the transistor blade seems to be an expression of how she's going to do this. Uh, and as we can see here, she's going to do it with a huge frickin' sword. And it will be interesting to see how her character develops over time with this choice to be violent. This scene especially, I wish we had the audio for because it's incredibly interesting. This transistor blade is actually saying, whoa, you really wanna go hunt down these, these assassins? I'm not sure that's a good idea, lady. But Red's made up her mind. She's going to go hunt down these, these people who tried to kill her. There's nothing that's gonna stop her. So, all in all, as we come to a close of this demo, I'm incredibly excited for Transistor. It's a different setting than Bastion, but maintains the same sense of an outsider. The West has its outsiders in the form of, you know, frontiersmen and cowboys, and the noir has its sense of outsiders in the femme fatale, and Red clearly is that. The character is very similar to the old character but at the same time is very different while we were, could easily transpose ourselves onto the character of the kid it's far easier for us to sympathize with red these narrative elements are going to make for an incredibly interesting game and i thank supergiant for giving us the chance to play it transistor is slated to come out in 2014 though we don't know a month and we don't know what particular platforms it will be coming out on Again, we apologize for not being able to get audio. Uh, we know it's a huge hit on a game like this, especially which has, you know, an incredible narrative presence, as well as the incredible work of Darren Corb at its disposal. Uh, if you've got any questions about the gameplay you've seen here, please don't hesitate to leave something in the comments below, and I will try and answer what I can.